Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I'm finally getting around to making the video that has probably been my most requested one for the past year. Comparing the uh, small detail print quality on the Bamboo Lab full-size A1 versus the A1 Mini. Um, now, uh, before we get started, if you would, please like and subscribe and leave a quick comment. That really does help me with the YouTube algorithm. So if you like what I do here, if it's helpful to you, please consider helping me out and doing those three simple things. Um, that said, let's dive in here. Um, just so you know what uh, the setup was for this, um, I did test, uh, I have uh, multiple A1 minis and two full-size A1s. Uh, I did test uh, between the individual machines to make sure that any print inconsistencies were not due to a mechanical issue with one of the machines. So when you see, uh, say, the stringing on the A1 Mini exam or the full size A1 examples I show here, uh, that was consistent between multiple full size A1s. So it was not a mechanical issue. Um, for the setup here, what I did, I went back and did full maintenance calibrations on all test machines. Uh, and then when I finally began running the test miniatures on a single A1 Mini and a single false size A1, uh, what I did was I used a single roll of Sunlu PLA Meta and a single 0.2 millimeter nozzle that I then swapped out between the machines. And I did that to eliminate any possibility that differences in the prints were due to a mechanical issue with one nozzle versus another or different production batches of filament. It was the exact same 0.2 millimeter nozzle being used for all of these and the exact same roll of filament. So um, I tried to eliminate any external factors from this so that what you're seeing is specifically the differences between the printers themselves with no external factors uh, uh, influencing the print results of what you're going to see here. So that said, let's dive in on all of these photos. When you see two miniatures in the photo, the full size A1 printer miniature is on the left. The a1 mini miniature is on the right. Now, in all of these examples, the main issue is the full size A1 produces a little bit more stringing than the A1 mini. Um, there were a few you know places where detail was just not quite as crisp. Uh, if you have to produce the absolute top quality uh, 28 millimeter miniatures possible on an FDM printer. The bottom line is the A1 Mini does do a slightly better job. If you can only afford one printer and you need the larger build volume of the full size A1, go ahead and grab it. You're going to have a little bit more cleanup to do on the Mini, but it's nothing that a minute with an X-Acto knife and a heat gun can't handle. And you're going to have something that's virtually indistinguishable from what was printed on the A1 Mini. If you just want to do miniatures and you're on a really tight budget, $199 for the A1 Mini is a fantastic deal. I do have a link in the video description for that and for the slicer profile that I created, my V12. Um, now, uh, when using other profiles or the stock Bamboo Studio profiles on this, the differences between the full size A1 and the A1 Mini become more pronounced. Um, my V12 slicer profile, I have tweaked it uh, from my earlier profiles to get the absolute maximum possible quality out of the full size A1 printer. So these comparisons um, are using my V12 profile. If you're going to use the stock Bamboo Studio profiles, uh, uh, th these comparisons go out the window. Um, I, I, when I tried it, I got much worse results on the full size A1. So, again, Sunlu PLA Meta Gray and my V12 profile. So, let's dive in here. We're going to take a look at these skeleton miniatures. Uh, again, full size A1 on the left, A1 Mini on the right. Um, 
The A1 Mini just has a couple of minor strings on it, uh, most noticeably up on the shield. Uh, the full-size A1 has a lot more stringing on it. Uh, also some um, little zits and stuff on the sword. There's also some uh, more noticeable banding on the sword. Um, uh, some of the details like the teeth were also not quite as crisp as those on the A1 Mini. Look at the backs here. Again, full-size A1 on the left, a lot more stringing. But again, nothing you couldn't clean up with a heat gun and an X-Acto knife in about a minute. Uh, here is the A1 Mini Skeleton. Again, right off the printer, it's there's almost nothing you'd have to do. Uh, you could rub off those few strings just with a piece of tape. Uh, the sword is nearly perfect. There's just a tiny little zit towards the uh, tip of it. Uh, but again, you could clean this thing up with an X-Acto knife in probably 20 seconds. Uh, here is the full-size A1 skeleton. Uh, there are more defects on the sword. Nothing you couldn't clean up with an X-Acto knife in about a minute. Uh, but again, they are there. There is a noticeable difference between them. But it's nothing insurmountable, and it's certainly better than what any other FDM printer on the market is currently producing. Uh, next up, we'll take a look at these two barbarians. Uh, right off the printer, they look almost identical. Um, just a hair more stringing on the full size A1. The only real major difference uh, on these uh, and what you're seeing here is the belt buckle. Uh, the A1 Mini did a more faithful job printing that belt buckle than the full size A1 did. It had some problems on the upper cross beam of it. Uh, it didn't like that overhang very much where the A1 Mini printed it perfectly. Uh, take a look at this next view here. Hey, this uh, sword is the A1 Mini miniature. Again, that uh, tip of the sword is almost perfect. Just the slightest little deformation from the heat, uh, but you could clean that up with an X-Acto knife uh, in about 10 seconds. Here is the tip of the sword from the full-size A1. Uh, again, it looks really good, but it definitely has more deformation than the A1 Mini did. Uh, again, you could clean this up in an X-Acto knife in no time at all, so it's not that big of a deal, but I have to call it out. Uh, moving on, we're going to take a look at these Cleric miniatures. Uh, if you look at both of these, full-size A1 on the left, uh, A1 Mini on the right, they look almost identical, just a hair more stringing on the uh, full-size A1. But that scale mail came out perfectly, and that is really tough with those multiple overhangs for a, an FDM printer to print, uh, but it did it perfectly. The only other thing that um, doesn't really show up well in this photo, but was noticeable when examining them under magnification, is the eyes on the Cleric on the right that was printed with the A1 Mini did print just a little bit crisper uh, than the one on the left on the full-size A1. But again, this is nothing you're going to notice on the tabletop when they're painted and sitting there at arm's length. Uh, here is the A1 Mini Cleric again. Everything just looks crisp and clear. couple of strings, but extremely minor. Uh, a little bit different view. Again, everything is nice and crisp. Uh, here is the full-size A1. Again, sorry, um, it's a little bit blurry, but uh, uh, it does show what I wanted to show on this was that scale mail. It just came out absolutely perfect on this. Um, uh, I, again, I am just shocked at what both of these printers will do on FDM minis. A um, little bit different view here. Uh, again, scale mail. It's, sorry it's a little blurred, but the scale mail did come out absolutely perfect on this. And this is the uh, full-size A1 again. Mm -hmm. So again, it does extremely well. Finally, we're going to take a look at this dwarf. Uh, it probably has the most noticeable differences between the two printers. The full-size A1 on the left, the A1 Mini on the right. Uh, Detail-wise, they're coming out almost identical. Uh, the full-size A1 did have a little bit of a problem with the left hand, the overhang on the fingers. They were a little more blobby versus the A1 Mini just did them perfectly. Uh, aside from that, the uh, only real difference is the amount of stringing. And the full-size A1 did have a lot more stringing when it came to the horns. Uh, here is the A1 Mini. 
uh, just came out absolute perfect, uh, nice and smooth. There's absolutely nothing to complain about on this miniature. Uh, if you look at the full size A1 here, uh, just more stringing. Uh, nothing you can't take care of with a heat gun and 30 seconds with an X-Acto knife, but it's there. Uh, so again, I got to call it out a little bit different view. Um, the bottom line here is both printers, the Bamboo Lab A1 full size and the Bamboo Lab A1 mini both produce outstanding uh, FDM miniatures. Uh, but again, these are with my V12 profiles. Um, uh, they are linked in the video description. When I've tried other profiles, Bamboo Studio profiles and stuff, the difference becomes more pronounced. Um, the V12, I designed it specifically to try to reduce the differences between these two printers and to get the maximum quality on the full size A1. Uh, so if you are going to try to print FDM minis on a full size A1, I really do strongly recommend using my latest miniatures profile. Uh, that is linked in the video description. The bottom line here is both printers are fantastic printers and which one you should choose basically comes down to what build volume you need and what your budget is. The A1 Mini can print up to 7 inches cubed. Uh, it's only $199, so if you're not printing anything bigger than that, it's a fantastic printer to start with and it will produce the highest quality FDM miniatures possible at this point. Uh, if you need a bigger build volume and you can only afford one printer, you can't go wrong with the A1, the full size. Just get a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, get the Sun Lumetta PLA and use my V12 profile. And at the end of the day, you're just going to have another 30 seconds of cleanup to do on your miniatures. It's not that big of a deal and they're going to look fantastic. So uh, anyways, thank you for watching. Please click that like and subscribe button and I will get a new video out soon. Thank you.